Fitting of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And may the peace and the praise and peace and blessings of Allah be upon the one who was sent as a mercy to all of mankind, Muhammad. A, a praise and a peace that is continuous and will last to the late to Yom Al Qiyamah. As for what follows, on an authority of Zayd ibn Khalid ibn Juhani, may Allah have be pleased with him. He narrated from the Prophet وسلم, that he said, whoever feeds a fasting person when he breaks his fast, or whoever prepares a warrior who wants to fight in the jihad, in the battle for the sake of Allah, whoever prepares him, then he will get the reward of him. He will get the reward like his reward. عن سلمان أن سلمان الفارسي رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من فطر فيه صائما كان مغفرة لذنوبه وعتق رقبته من النار وكان له مثل أجره من غير أن ينقص من أجره شيء عن طارق سلمان الفارسي رضي الله عنه ما الله be pleased with him on the authority of the Prophet وسلم, that he said whoever feeds a person who is fasting in a day or in this day of in fasting for him is forgiveness for all of his sins and indeed for him is the reward as if he had freed himself from slavery or he's been he's freed himself from the hellfire not slavery excuse me he gets the reward as if he freed his own self, his own neck from the hellfire. And he will get the reward of that person who he feeds without a decreasing from their reward whatsoever. I mean, he will get the reward for that person's fasting without a decreasing from their reward whatsoever. So when the companions heard the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying this, قُلْنَا We said to him, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, لَيْسَ كُلُّنَا يَجِدُ مَا يُفْطِرُ الصَّائِمِ 
He says not all of us is able to find means to feed a fasting person. فقال, so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعطي الله هذا الثواب من فطر صائما على تمرة أو جرعة لبن أو شربه ماء ومن سقى صائما سقاه الله من حوض شربة لا يضمأ بعدها حتى يدخل الجنة and so the Messenger of Allah went to say to the one who doesn't have the means to feed a person. He said, Allah will give this person a reward. He will give this person a reward from the person who breaks his fast, even if he was to give that person who breaks his fast a date. Or he was to give him a gulp of milk to drink or some water to drink. For whoever gives drink to a person who's breaking his fast, Allah will give him a drink from the fount that we will drink from that was in the sin of paradise, the fount that's in paradise when he goes to the hereafter, a drink he will receive from it that which will, will not, with that which will give him no desire to have thirst thereafter, after drinking that until he enters the paradise. Then he will desire and thirst once he enters. So this month, brothers and sisters in Islam, is a month of Jude, of doing kindness, of increasing and in doing the good in the, in the month of Ramadan. For doing that and striving to improve and doing good deeds in this month because of the period of time and the virtue of this time and the magnification of the rewards of one's deeds, that this shows it's a shatnun alim, it's a tremendous affair. There's truly been established, Thabata an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that has been established from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was said about him by Anas, Kana ajwad al nasi bil khayr. He was the most generous of the people in doing the good. He was the most generous of the people in doing the good, generally. He was out, he outdid everyone in doing that which was good. He was the best of the people in doing the good. And the most generous he was in doing the good was in Ramadan. So that shows that this is for us to take advantage of this short period of time of 29 or 30 days. That we strive to be better servants to the Creator. And that we strive to increase in doing the good. We should not be doing the same things we was doing before Ramadan. From amongst those things is we should take advantage of feeding others our food to get the rewards of the forgiveness of our sins. And that is because of the sharaf al waqt the nobility of the time frame we in now. And the multiple increasing of your rewards for doing any good. And aiding and assisting the fasting people. And aiding those who worship Allah upon their acts of obedience. For that will necessitate you being aided by Allah in your affairs. And, your, and you being helped with being in, given an increasement and reward of good. It was also narrated that the Prophet said, Man asa'ima, whoever satisfies a fasting person. Min la minhu hatta jannah. Hadith similar to what we just mentioned. That whoever satisfies a fasting person by getting and gives him a drink, Allah will give that person a drink from the fount of Jannah, a drink that he will have no thirst after it until he enters paradise. Also been narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said, Man fattara sa'iman ala ta'amin aw sharabin min halalin sallat alayhi al-malaikatu fi sa'ati shahri Ramadan wa salla alayhi jibareel laylat al-qadr rawahu tabrani For the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever feeds a fasting person with food or drink from that which is halal, meaning halal provisions, the angels will 
praise him and pray up over, pray up, send prayers upon him in the moments and hours of the month of Ramadan, meaning all of Ramadan, the angels will do that for that person. And the angel Jabril will make the same supplications for him on the night of decrees. When he, on the night of decrees, as narrated by Imam al tabarani عن ابن عن أنس رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال on the authority of Anas he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said or that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم at one time جاء إلى سعد بن عبادة that he came to سعد بن عبادة رضي الله عنه فجاء بخبز he brought to him some bread وزيت and some oil فأكل that he ate from it ثم قال النبي and then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أفكر عن أفكر عندكم الصائمون has eat has broken their fast with you those who are fasting وأكل طعامكم الأبرار and the righteous has eaten your food وصلت عليكم الملائكة and the angels have said prayers upon you have made supplication for you رواه أبو داود so brothers and sisters in Islam, this shows the importance of feeding in this month and playing a part if you cannot afford as an example to feed the people here in the masjid or any masjid. They collectively get together and do it with others. This is an encouragement to encourage your brother towards the good because Allah ordered us to cooperate upon the good. That Allah Ta'ala says And cooperate up with one another In doing the good deeds And in doing the Staying away from prohibited deeds Cooperate with one another As Allah Ta'ala has commanded us So we benefit from these narrations The virtue That within this month That we should have a race with one another Looking at these hadiths of the Messenger of Allah to do the things that the Prophet has encouraged us to do. Seeking this reward for feeding the fasting person when he breaks his fast. From the benefits we take from the narrations we presented is number one, ghufran is dhulu. You get your sins forgiven. Number two, itqar riqabi min al And it is a means to get your neck out of the hellfire. Number three, benefit we get from these narration, that he get the reward of the person who was fasting. He gets the reward, he gets the reward for his own fasting, gets the reward for the person who each person he fed who fasted that day. Who, who doesn't need that? Who doesn't want that reward? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made clear that the one who fasts, the path of Allah we mentioned in the previous khutbah, that it will distance him from the hellfire for 70 years for fasting one day in the path of Allah. So have now multiply that for every person that you feed. 70 times, 70 times that many people you fed. Who doesn't need that reward? Who doesn't need that rescue from the hellfire? For this, brothers and sisters in Islam, it shows us the importance of learning the religion to understand where lies Subhul Salam. Yani Subhul Al Khayrat where the pathways of goodness lie at, for us to pursue them, and seek them, and strive for them. As Allah Ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ And those who strive hard for our sake, subalana, We will truly guide them to the pathways of goodness. وَلَا يُمْكِنْ أَن تُهْدَى إِلَى سُبْلِ الْخَيْرَاتِ إِلَّا بِعِلْمِ it's not possible to be guided to the various pathways of good actions and deeds that Allah has given us that is innumerable except through knowledge, brothers and sisters in Islam, and except through application of the knowledge that you obtain. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the fourth benefit that we can mention, that we take from the narrations that we mention, is for that person who feeds is he gets the reward of the actions and good deeds of the person who's fasting. He gets the rewards and the good deeds of the person who's fasting. Madama fi botani. As long as that food that you fed them stays strong in his stomach, giving him strength to do his actions. So everything he does while that food is inside of him, 
a good deed, you get rewarded for that. Who don't need that? Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he said, وَمِنْهَا إِعَانَةُ الصَّائِمِينَ وَالْقَائِمِينَ وَالذَّاكِرِينَ عَلَى طَاعَتِهِمْ He said, from the benefits of feeding the person that the food aids that fasting person. It aids the one who stands to pray. It aids the one who remembers Allah upon acts of obedience. فَيَسْتَوْجِبُ الْمُعِينَ لَهُمْ then it necessitates that that will be an aid and a support for those people. مثل أجلهم And it will aid him in getting a reward like their reward. كما أن من جهز غازيا فقد غزا أو من خلفه في أهله أو خلفه في أهله فقد غزا انتهى كلام ابن رجب رحمه الله And ابن رجب he went on to say he gets the reward for them without a decrease in their reward. So if the person, just like the person who prepared the one to go fight in the battle, in the path of Allah, you prepare them and give them their sustenance, you get the reward for what he takes, what he used, as long as he have those tools that he used, that whatever you aid him with him with in fighting his jihad, you get the reward for whatever he does. The fifth benefit we take from this, these narrations is that من سقافي he saw him, that whoever gives drink to a person that's fasting, سقافوا الله من حول and Mustafa, that Allah will give him from the fount of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a drink, sharbata la yadma'u fihi, hatta yadukhul al-jannah, ba'daha. That he will never, he will get a drink that he will never be thirsty thereafter, until he enters the paradise, because he would just drink out of desire thereafter. So all of this is from amongst the benefits that we take from the importance of feeding one another. And even if it be with dates, even if it be with a drink of water, play your part. Go buy water and bring it to the masjid. If you have wealth, spend that wealth and buy food and feed the believers. For this was the actions of the seller. They understood the application of this far better than we did. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he defined what is intended here by feeding the poor person. Or feeding a person, I mean, doing that who's fasting. He says, "The Lord Murad be tafteerihi and tush and yush biahu." That it means to satisfy him with drink or with food, as he mentioned in Ikhtiyarat, page one hundred and ninety-four. Likewise, the Salaf, rahimahullah, they were people who yahrisun ala ita'am ita'am, who used to be zealous to feed food to others. And he used to consider that to be from the best forms of worship. As Ba'du Salaf Qal, as some of the Salaf have said, لِأَنْ أَدْعُوَ عَشْرَةَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِي فَأُطِعِمُهُمْ تَعَامًا يَشْتَهُونَهُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ أَنْ أُعْتِقَ عَشْرَةَ مِنْ وَلَدِ إِسْمَعِيلٍ one of the salaf, or some of the salaf used to say, Wallahi, that I invite 10 people from my companions to feed them some food that they desire is more beloved, ahabbu ilay, is more beloved to me than me freeing 10 of the sons of Ismail from slavery. Because slavery was practiced back then. That was more beloved to them. And it's great rewards in freeing of slaves. And so many of the Salaf, this was their attribute, this was their quality. Like Abdullah ibn Umar anhu, or Ahmed ibn Hanbu, or Dawood al Ta'i, or Malik ibn Dinar, rahimahumullah jami'a. May Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon all of them, that all of these righteous predecessors, those with these righteous names, the Kanu min al Salaf, from them from amongst the Salaf, were those who used to feed their food to their brethren who were fasting. And they did not ever would sit down and eat food except that they would take the opportunity to gather people to feed with them and eat from the food that they were eating. Seeking these blessings that we have mentioned previously. This is how our salaf for brothers and sisters in Islam. كَانَ أَحَدُهُمْ يَجْلِسُ وَيَخْدَمُهُمْ وَيُرَوِّحُهُمْ That they used to sit with them and serve the people. They were seeking this blessing, going out of their way to give service to these individuals and trying to make them comfortable. Seeking these rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established, Allah and His Messenger has established. From them was Hassan al-Basri, from them was Abdullah ibn Mubarak, 
Rahimahumallah. And likewise, Imam Shafi'i used to say, Rahimahullah, Uhibbu lil rajli azziyadata min bil jawdi fi shahri Ramadan. He said, I love for a person to increase in doing good, the doing good acts in the month of Ramadan. Doing so, iqtida'an bil rasooli sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Following and imitating the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Wa ihajat al-nasi bihi ila masalihihim. وَلِتَشَاهُولِ كَثِيرٍ مِّنْهُمْ بِالصَّوْمِ وَالصَّلَاةِ عَنْ مَكَاسِبِهِمْ Pay attention to this point. He said, because, Imam Shafi said, because of the dire need that the people have of being fed, because of, the, because of this bringing to them much need and benefit that they have, because they themselves be too busy and occupied, many of them, with fasting and praying and doing acts of obedience, leaving off their earnings getting their earnings. So their earnings decrease. So this is because they want to be busy with serving Allah in this short period of time because they saw the value of this sharaf al waqt Ramadan, the nobility of the time of Ramadan. Because it amazes me when we in the masjid and people can sit down in the corner and play with their phones and do other things instead of getting up and praying with the imam. As if Ramadan is guaranteed to them. As if this month is all year round. This is a special time that we must take advantage of. Put aside what you want to do and what you think you should be doing. Make all of that weight and put the taking advantage of this month, brothers and sisters in the Islam. Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu, he used to fast and he would not break his fast illa ma'a masakin, except with poor people. For if his family will hinder him from doing that, let me ta'asha to he wouldn't even eat that night. He would break his fast, he wouldn't even eat that night. Because he was so zealous to take advantage of these opportunities, brothers and sisters in Islam. And this was Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn Khattab, the companion that was ashadduhum ittiba'an the sunnah, who was the most severe of them in trying to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So likewise, we should take advantage of these same opportunities. Hassan al-Basri kana yut'imu ikhwanahu wa huwa sa'im tatawwa'a wa yajlisu yurawihuhum wa hum ya'kulun That Hassan al-Basri, outside of Ramadan, a, a voluntary fast, he would feed his brothers and he would be fasting himself but he would feed them and sit with them and try to make them feel comfortable and, and enjoy their time with, with them while they ate trying to take advantage of the khayr while fasting, trying to take advantage of increasing and doing the good. Did we not say in Sha'ban, the Messenger of Allah, he used the light when his deeds was raised up, and yakuna sa'ima, to be fasting while his deeds were was raised up to Allah. Either yurfa'u a'mal, kana nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and yuhibbu, and yakuna sa'ima, wa a'maluhu marfu'a. He used to love while his deeds is being raised up that he be fasting because the state of fasting while doing good is one of the best ways to get your rewards enhanced by Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. For like this was the Salaf brothers and sisters in Islam. كان حماد بن أبي سليمان يفتر كل ليلة في شهر رمضان خمسين إنسانا فإذا كان ليلة الفطر كساهم ثوبة ثوبة that Hamad ibn Sulaiman from amongst our righteous predecessors that we've been commanded to follow Allah, it was narrated that Hamad ibn Abi Sulaiman used to feed every single night of the month of Ramadan 50 people for either can a later to fit then when it was the night of the Eid Eid al-Fitr the first and the last night that he will clothe them with clothing. He will give clothing to people. Seeking these good acts. How many of us do this? This is why brotherhood existed amongst them. Because they used to use being good and kind and spending their wealth and their time with those who was less fortunate than them as a means to enter Jannah, as a means to get closer to Allah to better with Ta'ala. We don't even know where each other live, at, let alone do good with one another. We don't even know what circumstance each other in because we keep away from one another. We don't try to do good deeds with one another. We don't have mutual cooperation 
with one another upon righteousness except praying in the masjid. Nothing outside of that. When the goal, the objective of the salat, with jama'ah, with jama'ah, with jumu'ah, and all the point of all of that is to increase brotherhood and to help one another to increase in iman and obedience to Allah. How is that possible when we don't even know each other? All we know is kaifa haluka when you walk in the door. Salaamu alaikum. But we don't know each other's circumstance. We don't invite each other to one another's house and try to feed one another. We don't do any of these acts. Illa man rahima rabbi. Except whom Allah shows his mercy upon. Wa qadeerun ma'hum. And how few they are. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi kama yuhibbu Allahu ta'ala wa yarda wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in We wanted to remind the people today on the second half of the khutbah about an era that happens that I was brought to my attention and I saw some of it but others have brought it to my attention about how individuals enter the masjid and have conversations in the back of the masjid or with others or speak or give salam and a person will return it or a person want to walk up to a person to bring their attention to something important outside and will speak directly to them during the khutbah. All of this is yulghi thawabu thawabu adat al jumaa that doing this act, it nullifies the reward of what you came for to establish that obligation of Jumaat. It nullifies it. We wanted to share a fatwa from Sheikh Ibn Baz, rahimahullah. He was questioned, and we're going to try to rush through this, inshallah. Su'ad. Man takalama wal imamu yakhtubu, aw qala lilladhi bijanibihi uskut, faqad laqa. فإذا أنا بجوار واحد وعطس وحمد الله فقلت له يرحمك الله فهل لغيت وإذا كنت قد لغيت فماذا يجب علي علما قلت له والإمام يخطو يخطو The questioner asked Sheikh Ibn Ibaz What do you say about a person who speaks while the Imam is giving the khutbah? And he says, for example, to a person next to him, be quiet, who's talking. And the one next to him says to be quiet. Did he nullify his, did he lose his reward? Or when a person is sitting next to another person and he sneezes and says, Alhamdulillah. And then I say to him, Ya Allah, have I nullified my, my reward? Or if I was to say, or would I be nullifying my reward? If that be the case, then what is obligatory upon me, knowledge base, to say to this person while the Imam is giving the khutbah? Wa Shaykh ibn Ibaz ajab, he said, La yajuz al kalami wal Imam wa yakhtubu ma'al nas. That it's not permissible for have speech going on or speaking to occur while the Imam is giving the khutbah before to the people. La ma'al aqis is not allowed for the one. To respond to the one sneezing, wala ma'aghay, nor with anyone else other than a sneezer. Wal wajibu al insat. What is obligatory is that you be quiet and pay attention and not let anything else distract you. The sima al khatib, so you can pay attention to the sermon giver. Wa illa, because otherwise, ma al khatib la bas. But otherwise, only one allowed to do that is the one who's giving the khutbah. He can talk to the people or the people can say something to the one who's giving the khutbah. If they see him make a mistake and they want to correct him, or if they see a dire necessity to question him, they can do this. But to one another, 
or to speak generally that this is not permissible. وَإِذَا أَرَادَ يَسَلُ خَطِيبٌ عَنْ شَيْءٍ That he says that he want to ask the one giving a khutbah about anything أو يُنكر عليه شيئا Or he wants to reject or find rejectionary or correct or wrong أو أخطأ في Some mistake someone made يَجِبُ الْإِنْكَارَ That necessitate for him to correct the imam for فَالْكَلَامُ الْمَعَ الْخَطِيبُ لَا بَاسْ There's no problem for him to speak to the one giving the sermon and of course there's no problem in the one giving the sermon to speak because that is a part of who he's supposed to do in giving his sermon but as far as the people and that which is between them no they cannot speak even if a person was to sneeze and say alhamdulillah you do not say to that person your alhamdulillah nor do you say, or, or, nor, he said, it's just like, just like you don't do that when in prayer. You don't sit in prayer and hear somebody sneeze and say, Alhamdulillah, you say, Ya Alhamdulillah. Likewise, when sitting, listening to the khatib giving the khutbah, you don't respond like this. And he says that the person listens to the khutbah and pay attention like he's the one who prays, listening to the imam and doesn't speak when he's reciting. He doesn't return the salam. He doesn't initiate the salam, nor does he sneeze himself when he, I mean, nor does, nor does he say alhamdulillah himself when he sneezes out loud. فَهَذَا هُوَ الْوَاجِبُ He said, this is what is obligatory. He says, all of this is based off the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا قُلْتَ لِصَاحِبِكَ The Prophet said, if you say to your companion, Unsit, be quiet and pay attention, don't be distracted. Yom al Jum'ah on the day of Jum'ah, when the Imam yaqtu, while the Imam is giving a khutbah, فَقَدْ لَغَيْتْ مَعَ أَنَّهُ أَمْرَهُ He said this person has destroyed and nullified their rewards for their fasting. Even if it's commanding with the good, all of this doing is active, the time isn't the time for that. And the other hadith he brings, is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever speaks on the day of Jum'ah while the Imam is giving the sermon, that the Prophet said he's like a donkey carrying books. And the one who says to him, be quiet, the Prophet said, the one who says to that person who he heard speak, be quiet. Pay attention or shh. make the noise. Shh. He has no Juma'ah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. That this shows that this person's Juma'ah, his reward is gone and he has missed it. It's reward. Because of him speaking during the time the sermon was given. Even if his speech be in or around an affair that is a good thing to speak about or to speak for. Even if it be for that reason. Even if he commanding with some good or prohibiting some evil or saying Allah to the one who sneezes and says Alhamdulillah What is obligatory that that be abandoned Just like it is obligatory for the person to leave that when he's in the state of prayer This is his job to pay attention to the khutbah and not to return the salams and do any of the things that has been mentioned and we wanted to say this because numerous people have complained to me that during the khutbah people are speaking people are talking as if they don't take their deen that serious you imagine what your deeds want to be on muqiyama when you don't perform them in a manner that's been legislated for it's incumbent upon us brothers and sisters of islam to learn this religion not to learn it as an extra curriculum, but to learn it to save your butt from the hellfire. Learn it to save your heart from loving what Allah hates. And that's it. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ateem as salam.
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكاة فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب دري يوقد من شجرة مباركة يوقد من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسسه نار نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الامثال للناس والله بكل شيء في بيوت ندن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو ولا صال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله والله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب والذين كفروا أعمالهم كسراب بقيعة يحسبه الظمآن ماء حتى إذا جاء لم يجده شيئا ووجد الله عنده فوفاه حسابه والله سريع الحساب الله سمع الله لمن حمده